We are back again. It is 1230 and we have a wonderful way to kick off the afternoon. Uh, we have part of Dr. Drew Singal team. We have um, Elizabeth Tillotson, who is the in the clinic. She is the um, nurse practitioner along with uh, Sarah Thompson, who is our special nurse, and they are going to walk you through an ICG lymphography, lymphography, and um, it's very exciting. So stay tuned, and here they are. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to myself. I guess you guys have been here all day. Um, today, we're here to talk to you about ICG lymphography, which is a huge component of the, of the workup for patients that we do here at the center. Um, I'm Elizabeth Tillotson. I go by Tilly. So if any of my patients are out there, that's sort of what they refer to me as. Um, so you'll likely hear me called that throughout the day. And I am Sarah, I'm the lymphatic surgery nurse at the Boston Lymphatic Center. And Tilly and I work side by side on a daily basis. Awesome. So one thing we want to answer right away is what even is ICG lymphography? ICG lymphography is the imaging of the superficial lymphatic system that is done with a series of injections in a given extremity to light up the lymphatic system um, so that we're able to image it and map it out. ICG lymphography can also be used to identify areas of disease and to identify how severe disease is. Um, ICG lymphography was first described to be used to identify areas of disease in 2007. Um, this is a paper here by Dr. Ogata, um, and it shows images actually of areas of diseased extremity in the lower extremity. So if you look at the three images on the bottom of the slide, you will see areas that are lighting up in those areas we call stardust or diffuse disease. What you would expect to see in an unexpected, in an unaffected extremity would be linear straight channels. And here you can see clearly that is not what you're seeing. And luckily today, we're gonna to be able to show you video of this happening on real life patients that you might even recognize. So next, another image. The most common question that patients ask us when they come to the Boston Lymphatic Center is why so many images? Why do I have to undergo three images? Here you can see there's the MRI and the lymphocentigraphy. And the third image that we perform is the ICG lymphography, which we're talking about today. The MRI here is showing you an affected extremity versus an unaffected extremity. And we are able to identify the severity of edema versus the severity of fat hypertrophy. Switch that. Here, we are able to identify if a patient is a fluid dominant patient versus a fat dominant patient. In the lymphocentigraphy, we're looking at the deep lymphatic system. We can identify lymph nodes, lymphatic channels, and dermal backflow. And the third final image, which we're talking about today, the ICG lymphography, is looking at the superficial lymphatics. Another injection. So many patients ask us this second question. Why so many injections? They've already had injections with the lymphocentigraphy and now they're having injections with the ICG lymphography. Here, this is a picture depicting a colleague and a friend of ours, Dr. Hiro Suwami from Australia, who did anatomic work, understanding how the hand and the arm drain in the upper extremity. With this work, we are able to identify where we should inject in the upper extremity to make sure that we capture and identify all of the lymphatic channels that we can. Awesome. Is it painful? I think this is a question that we get nearly every single time a patient comes into clinic. So um, this is actually Dr. Single and my extremities being shown in this, in this slide. So the is it painful is super important to us because we actually did um, injections on ourselves, because I'd say one of the most glaring things when we see patients come into clinic is initially about three years ago when we started doing this, how painful it really was for patients. People were jumping off the table. We couldn't believe how, how painful it was. And as a nurse, it pains me to, to put people into that situation. So um, through multiple injections on ourselves, a couple different modalities and some different solutions, we actually came up with a solution that is much less painful. Um, we got the idea from work of a colleague in Japan, um, Dr. Yamamoto, who also is gonna be published on the paper. But basically we took the solution that used to be mixed with sterile water, and instead we mixed it with 5% dextrose, which has decreased the pain threshold quite a bit. Um, I always joke with Dr. Single, he 
initially ranked the pain at about an eight out of 10. I myself was a six. Um, but after this, we've brought the pain down to about a one or two out of 10 pain, which I think all of our patients are very, very happy about. After this, we are going to now show a video of two patients actually being injected and, and going through the ICG lymphography in the clinic. Hi, Catherine. How are you? Hi. Nice to see you again. Yes, it's good to see you. So you're here today. We're going to do the ICG lymphography. This is the last and final step of your workup. Um, and then after that, we get to discuss everything at our lymphatic conference, which we have every Friday. And then you'll come and you'll meet with Dr. Singal to discuss all of those findings. Perfect. Today is going to be very interesting um, because the other images that you have, like the MRI and the lymphocentigraphy, uh, you probably didn't really get to see a lot what, what they were imaging. Today is going to be awesome because you get to see it on the screen with us as Tilly and I are in here um, filming the ICG. Um, a couple things to know, I like to tell patients that the ICG lymphography is kind of similar to the lymphocentigraphy in the sense that the injections are similar, okay. but a lot of patients kind of complain about the lymphocentigraphy being painful on the injections. Um, these injections are not painful. Tilly and Dr. Singal have tested this on themselves so they know how it feels um, and we've come up with a mixture that's less painful. Um, things to note about the injections that are similar to the lymphocentigraphies, we're going to be injecting in the first web space on both legs and then the fourth web space. We'll then come up to the uh, medial thigh and inject there. We'll then flip you over, and then we'll inject on both calves. Oh, okay. So during this, the lights go on and off. We do all the injections first in the front, and then we shut the lights off and we uh, film. You'll be able to see that the flow of the dye will be going up, you know, the front of the foot, up the anterior calf, and then up the thigh. And then when we flip you over, we'll be able to look at the backside. Um, a couple things to note about the injection. So our dye mixture here is 5% albumin. We also use 5% dextrose, which is what we learned helps to keep the pain down. And then the endocyanine green, that is the dye. The dye is green, so when we do the injections, you will have green dots on the injection sites. Those injection sites, the green will not scrub away. Um, it will just flush out of your system in one to two weeks. Usually takes a little bit longer on the um, affected extremity. Okay. Other things to note about the injections, we use a uh, clear tegaderm sticky dressing over the injection sites. This keeps things nice and clean. Sometimes Tilly needs to manipulate the injection sites by pushing the dye through, and that is what we use over that. The needle is a very, very tiny needle. It's probably the smallest you can get. Mm -hmm. So a little pinch of the needle. I know nobody likes any sort of needle in between their toes, um, but once it's done, it's no pain at all. Okay, are there any questions I can answer for you? No, I think I'm good to go. Hi, how are you, Catherine? Good, nice to see you, Tilly. Nice to see you, too. Um, again, I know you know me, but I am Tilly. I'm the nurse practitioner here, and I'll be running your exam today. Um, talk to me about why you're here. Well, this is the last, I think the last screening test I need for the evaluation to have surgery, uh, the sample procedure here. That's right. So, um, as we know, you have a history of right-sided lymphedema of the lower extremity, and you're here today for something called ICG lymphography, which is going to be a real-time image of the superficial lymphatic system. Um, I'm going to run through a consent form with you about what we're going to do today. The risks of this procedure are pretty minimal, but I do have to review them. Okay. So this consent form here has my name at the top, and then it says you have a history of right lower extremity lymphedema. Do you agree with me that it's on the right side? Correct. We are actually going to image both sides today so that we can get a baseline image of the left side as well. So we're going to be doing an ICG lymphangiogram with interpretation on both sides. Why are we doing this? To map your superficial lymphatic system. What happens if we don't do this? Nothing. You don't have to have this image, but we ask that you do as part of your workup today. What are the risks of the procedure? Anytime you use needles or do injections, there is a small risk for infection. The risk for infection on your right side is higher, given your history of lymphedema sure. on that side. 
Um, and then the second risk would be a dye reaction. Nobody has ever reacted to the dye before, um, but someday someone might. We're prepared if that happens. Itchiness at the injection site is to be expected. That's normal, but I'm talking like a major reaction of shortness of breath or chest pain. You want to let me know right away. The rest of this consent form actually doesn't really apply to you. I will be running your image today, and you will be my patient. Great. Questions? Um, no, I think you've explained it pretty well. Okay, great. If that's the case, I will have you sign right here, and we'll get started. Okay. How long does it last? take the procedure? It will take probably about 10 minutes today oh, to complete this. Yeah. Super. Okay, so we'll start with some injections between your toes. So there are four injection sites on each side mm -hmm. for a total of eight injections today. Okay. okay. The dye that we inject um, historically was quite painful. We have found a solution that is a lot less painful with what we'll be using today. So I'm just cleaning your skin. Injection of dye right into your skin. How are you doing? Great. Yeah, it's uh, much easier than the than the procedure. Take a few. <laughs> That's what we've heard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the volume? It's what is it like a tenth of a. Yep, just point one per injection. Okay. These are just little plastic coverings that I use. Um, basically so that as I'm doing the exam, I don't want to get the dye on my hands and contaminate the field. Um, so if I start rubbing dye all over you, our, our exam will be compromised. So does it begin almost immediately starting to travel? Yeah, so the dye will be uptaken by your lymphatic system basically immediately after injection. So once we turn off the lights and have the turn on the camera, you should be able to see your lymphatics mm -hmm. right away. So during this study, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this camera to image your superficial lymphatic system. I'm going to do that by running the camera along your leg like this. You won't be able to see me doing this as it will be dark, but that's how we're going to obtain these images. Okay. As the video starts, you will see the dorsal foot of the patient's left lower extremity in which there are 
healthy lymphatic channels. As you move up the leg, however, you will notice that there are not very well-defined lymphatic channels visualized. The patient's right lower extremity is their affected extremity, and you can see that the dye is not well organized even in the dorsal foot. As we travel up the patient's leg, you'll see that dye is not traveling up the leg until we arrive at the next injection site in the medial thigh. You can see a scatter of dye in a pattern that we describe as diffuse or stardust. So that was the image. Uh, you've now completed your workup. And so next steps are going to be uh, scheduling you for a lymphatic conference, which is held on Friday mornings. And then we'll schedule you with Dr. Singal to come in. We'll do a full evaluation. And then we'll discuss the entire workup, MRI, lymphocentigraphy, and ICG lymphography. If you have any questions um, or concerns with any sort of redness to uh, the right extremity or even the left, give our office a call. There is that risk of infection. Um, you don't have a history of infections, right. which is a good thing, but there's always that chance. So always give the office a call if you notice any redness. The itchiness on the injection site should bypass once you leave here. If it doesn't, you can take Zyrtec during the day or Benadryl at night, and that should help. Okay. But other than that, you have no restrictions after this image. You can go on your merry way, um, and then we'll be in touch. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks excellent. for coming in. Yeah, very interesting. Great, thank you. Teresa? Yeah. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Good, good. Glad you could come in today. Okay. I know we already know each other, but I'm Sarah, the lymphatic surgery nurse, okay. and you are here today for the ICG lymphography. Right. This is part of your post-op workup. Mm -hmm. You are a current patient, and um, so we want to do the ICG lymphography to look at the superficial lymphatics. Um, the depth that we're looking at is different than the nuclear medicine lymphocentigraphy in the sense that we're looking very superficial, about 1.5 to 2 centimeters of depth, mm -hmm. whereas the lymphocentigraphy looks very, very deep. There are five total injections. We do um, the first web space here, the fourth web space, and then we turn your arm over and we do two here on the wrist and then we'll do one up here on the upper arm. Sometimes there's um, an extra one that we might do, okay. um, and that depends what Tilly, our nurse practitioner, sees on imaging, okay? okay? These injections are also separated out, and what I mean by that is we will inject the first web space, and then we will shut the lights off in image. Okay. We wanna see how the dye is flowing, and then we'll turn the lights on, and then we'll inject the next uh, web space. Okay. Um, the other thing to note with the injections, before we start injecting, we will be using ultrasound. The ultrasound is basically to help Tilly kind of identify her pathways. Mm -hmm. So she will be using an ultrasound um, and marking um, some veins. Does not mean that we're injecting into veins. We are right. injecting very <clears throat> superficial, just into the dermis. Great. Come on in. Hi, Teresa. How, How are, are you? you? Oh. It's so nice to see you. <laughs> Thanks for coming in today. How are you doing? Wonderful. Yeah. Um, so you're here today to do an ICG lymphography of your upper extremities. We are going to start with an ultrasound of your veins. So we, we're going to mark your cephalic and your basilic veins. I use those as landmarks so I can tell which lymphatics I'm looking at when the lights are off and as we, as we sort of move around and image your arm. Okay. All right, so the first injection we're going to do is going to be between your thumb and your first finger. Okay. This is going to allow us to map your radial lymphatics. So this is the radial side of your forearm. One, two, three, stick. The dye gets injected right into your skin, and your superficial lymphatic system should pick it up basically immediately, and we'll be able to see it on it. really not that painful. Good.
In this video, you can see linear channels traveling from the hand up the arm towards the armpit or axilla. This patient does in fact have what we call the MS pathway, which we believe is potentially protective against the development of lymphedema following axillary lymph node dissection and radiation. As the video goes on through the multiple passes, you will see areas of injection sites as well as linear pathways on all aspects of the upper extremity. All right, so now we finish the ICG lymphography. That is the final step to your post-operative full lymphatic workup. So we will bring all of the images to our lymphatic conference, which we hold on Fridays, and then we'll schedule you to meet with Dr. Singal to review everything and uh, come up with next steps. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Awesome. Um, so first thing before answering any questions, we just want to say a huge thank you to Kathy and Teresa for being patients for our video, being patient patients with our videos. Um, super helpful. And it's such a pleasure to take care of both of you. Okay, uh, we do have some questions. And first, as the first patient, in case you, you know you didn't recognize me, um, <laughs> is it was completely pain free. Uh, I was astonished by that because I have read through um, online sites that people have not had that experience. So, um, I, as a patient, and um, I and firsthand knowledge now, I appreciate what you. Um, Tilly and Dr. Singal went through, you know, to um, create that environment, that experience for us because mm -hmm. it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I think, um, you know, it is definitely work that we're super proud of, or I'm especially super proud of to be able to give you that experience, that less painful experience. Um, that work is actually going to be published in PRS, our plastic surgery journal. So we're hopeful that with that article, hopefully patients across the country and world are going to be able to have a better experience because um, it really was traumatizing for the provider and the patient, honestly, seeing how painful it was initially. And as a provider, you hope it's not as bad as it seems, but then when you feel it yourself, you realize it really was almost intolerable. So we're happy to have been able to change that for our patients. Yeah, that, that's amazing. It's hard to believe that based on my experience a few days ago. Um, so we do have a question. Uh, what are the precautions after care uh, for care after this procedure, since as patients were, were typically told to stay away from injections and uh, treatment in that limb? So as you may have saw in the video, when we finish up, I like to explain to patients that it's important that they assess the extremity. Can you hear me now? <laughs> um, it's important, whether you had infection, a history of infections or not, it's important you're at risk. So watching those injection sites, whether it's the lower extremity, there's four injection sites on each leg, the upper extremity, there can be six injections. So watching those for the next week or two, ultimately, because that's as long as it takes for that ICG dye to kind of flush out of the system. And so looking for redness, fevers, chills, and just calling the office if there's any sort of skin reaction. I think also important to note, Sarah is so awesome. She will look back in a patient's history before they come to clinic. And if the patient does have a history of infections or prior infections in that extremity, we will pre-medicate with antibiotics just to be super careful on the day of injection. Great, great. Um, so here's a question. Could you have normal deep lymphatic channels and... Um, no superficial and still have lymphedema, or do you need really neither one functioning? That is a great question. <laughs> um, so, you know, the image that we are doing with the superficial lymphatics does only show that, that um, anatomy. And that is why we also sort of um, conjoin it with the deeper lymphatic system as well. And so I think it's important to understand that each image is really just one piece of the puzzle when we're putting a patient um, picture together. And I think Dr. Single wants to add something too about, uh, about that question. Of course he does. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a great question and it's a complex question. So it's important to emphasize what Tilly and Sarah have already brought up, which is ICG focuses on the superficial system. 
There is a separate deep system. We know that runs along the great vessels, the femoral artery, deeper within the muscle fascia. And we also know that there are connections between the superficial and deep system. Uh, interestingly, when we image our patients, even when we notice disease in the superficial area, the deep system is often preserved. But there's a lot of great work coming out of Italy uh, where they are focusing on separate imaging for the deep system. So it's a great question, more to come likely in the coming years. Okay, thank you so much. Um, do you use ICG to direct manual lymph drainage as, as well as for surgical decision-making? That's another really, really good question. So, you know, one of the big um, exciting things going on here at BIDMC is we were just able to open our own lymphatic center, right? So really, really exciting. They've built us a room specifically for ICG imaging. And actually in our audience here live right now is, is one of our amazing physical therapists who I hope to, to join forces with. And ideally, because we are now sort of all in this one space, it's going to allow for really linear patient care. And so at the same time as my ICG imaging, I plan to have PT come in, look at those functioning superficial linear lymphatics and hopefully do guide drainage. And that's really a, a goal that hopefully we're going to start instituting in the next coming weeks, I hope. Great, great. Um, here's a comment from Lori saying the videos of patient visits were so instructive and compelling. What a great idea. Thank you so much. Oh, thank so, you. Welcome. Wonderful. Um, do we have time for one more? Okay. Um, let's see. What's the difference? Oh, what makes um, what makes the difference in the uh, being it less painful? Is it the type of dye you use or do you add something to the injection? Sure. Um, so the way that the dye was historically mixed was with sterile water. Um, so actually in that, in that study that we did, we tried a bunch of different stuff. Um, what ended up being the, the key factor was sugar. <laughs> so um, like a Mary Poppins story here. So we added some 5% dextrose. Um, I'm imagining it changes the pH of the solution. So a uh, more basic solution likely is what, what happened here. And so the injection became much less painful just by changing the, the solvent. Um, we tried a couple of things. We tried cryotherapy, um, freezing the skin beforehand. We tried lidocaine. We tried a bunch of different things and it ended up being the sugar water that did the trick. So maybe this is something you could bring back to your, your uh, lymphedema clinics worldwide. I'm sure Dr. Singal would be thrilled with that. Yeah. Um, well, we thank you so much. This was um, for both speaking for both Teresa and I. Um, it was uh, it was a great experience, and your center, your new center, is beautiful. And appreciate your your clinical care. Amazing. Thanks thank so you. much, you guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you.